Now, about a week ago, I did a video on the DxO color wheel and hue picker, and I showed you how you can change the hues of different parts of your image. And today I'm going to show you another way, a very powerful way of changing hues and colors of your images with a technology called U-Point technology. Now, this technology was brought over from uh, the Nick collection when DxO bought out Nick software from Google, and uh, this technology is really cool. We're going to change this car from blue to green very simply with U-Point technology. Now, there's other ways of doing it in uh, Photolab 4. There's uh, brushes, there's auto masking tools, but U-Point technology gets it done very simply and easily. So that's what we're going to do today. Without any further ado, let's get started. Today's tutorial is a follow-up tutorial to a tutorial I did about a week or two ago, and I showed you the uh, DxO color wheel, which is found right in this color group right here. And here's the color wheel, the HSL color wheel and hue picker. And I showed you how you could use the hue picker to like pick a color, like uh, blue or something like this, like on this car right here. And then you could go and you could change its color, you know. And I've had some people saying, well, that's really cool, but wish they would give you the ability to mask, just like in Capture One. Well, on today's tutorial, I want to show you a way that we can do that. Now, we're not going to use the HSL color wheel and hue picker. We're going to use U-Point technology. And it's really cool, and it's really simple to do, and it's very powerful, and I'm going to show that to you next. And just like with Capture One, I'll be able to get rid of these issues like areas that I didn't want the color to change. So let me go ahead and close this and uh, I'm going to go ahead and reset my image and I'm going to change this car. I'll change it red, but I'll show you how we can change it to any, pretty much any color that we want to, all with the U-Point technology. To utilize the U-Point technology, you need to come up here to the menu and click on local adjustments. And when you do... Right now, you'll notice I'm in the um, U-Point technology here. If I right-click with my mouse, this wheel comes up here, and there's different things we can do. Here's your uh, control points, which would be your U-Point technology, which is technology that DxO has gotten from uh, the Nick collection, which is really cool stuff, right? And then we have an adjustment brush here, an auto mask, I should say. Uh, we have a graduated filter. We have a, a brush here, a masking brush. And we can do things like undo, erase, and so on and so forth. All right. And we have this little question mark here. If you click it, you'll get this uh, information up here, a little menu telling you what these different control points do and different shortcuts for hiding your masks and things like that. So you have that information as well. But right now, I'm in the U-Point technology. And you can see on my screen there, see that? I'm moving around. That's a U-Point right there. So what we want to do is we want to click. And see this round circle here? This is called an area of influence. You can make that larger or smaller. And if you want to see what area that's encompassing, if you come down here, see where it says show mask, you can see that area. Now watch when I stretch this out. You can see it's covering more area right there, okay? And it's even going up into the sky here, which I don't want. So you, you have a choice here where you can make it a certain size. And I'm going to make it a size about that size. Now I can keep adding these points here. And I'll show you here in a second what I mean by that. But for now, let's shut the mask off. This tutorial is not an in-depth tutorial on the U-Point technology. I'll be doing more videos, but for now, we're just dealing with the hue, and we'll make a few other adjustments, but um, just bear with me here. But you'll notice we have these controls up here after I've clicked and made that point. And this first icon here deals with light, and if I click on that, you'll see all my lighting tools, and if I click on the center one, these are my color tools, and they uh, correspond to these uh, filters up here. You know, how we can filter out the light tools, the color tools, and the detail tools. Same with this here. And if I click on the third one, it's in my detail. And this deals with sharpness and blur. And the blur tool is cool. I'll do a whole video just in a blur tool. I love that. But for now, let's go back to the color tool. So I'm going to click on that. Now, this, this adjustment to the very far right here, is my hue tool and you'll see this little circle with an arrow that's my reset i can reset this tool if i want to these two tools right here deal with color balance uh, i can't use those only on raw files this is just uh, a stock image i got off the internet and so it's just a jpeg image 
but I just need the hue adjustment today and maybe the saturation and vibrancy, which are found to the left over here. Okay, so let's say we want to change this car to red. So let's, we can move this hue tool up and we can find red or we can move it down and find green in different colors. Find the color that you want. I'm going to find like a red color, maybe a red hue, I should say, right there. Okay, so right there we can see I'm not encompassing the whole car yet, right? But once I have this set, every time I add a new control point, it's going to add a whole nother circle of influence. You see that circle there? And it's going to pick up another area. Now I can pick up another area. I can come and pick up another area. You just got to click around. It's really not hard. It's simple. You know, some may say, well, geez, I'm clicking around like crazy here. Well, hey, you know, it's worth it. You just click. You're not painting layer masks or anything. You're just simply making some clicks. And I can click on this area here if I want to make that red. Let's come over here and make this red down in here, maybe right up in here. Whatever you want to make red, you just give it a click. And then we can come up into here and click. And it's going to go and get some areas I don't want, but I'll show you how we fix that. It's very simple to fix. So I'm just making some clicks, and as you can see, I'm making my car turn red. Now I need this to go red down in here, so I'm just going to click around. Bear with me here. Okay, right in here I'm going to click. And right here. Maybe right in here. Let's go in here. A few more clicks. Okay, that's cool. And maybe one up in here. Okay. Now, if you'll notice, there's some areas I don't want it to get because it's got some on the uh, on the rear view mirror here, but just, which is okay because it would reflect some of that red light now, wouldn't it? So I'd probably actually want to leave it on there. Let me get this area right here. Okay, so areas that I don't want it to go on to, there's something called negative control points. And you see right down here, see right next to this control point, which is... A positive control point here's a negative control point I'm going to click it so when you have a negative control point you can come here and areas that have turned red I can click with a negative control point and you see that all we're doing here is layer masking guys we're just doing a simple layer masking job but we're just using U point technology and I'm just clicking here and getting these colors to come back in which I mean I just love this technology and it's it's really not hard to use and I could click on this light right here if I don't want it to change. Okay, cool. If anything has changed on here, I just put some negative control points. And this area was red down in here, okay. So we put some negative control points down in here. Um, and I think that's pretty good. Now, if I click on my show mask, you can see these are the areas that it's affecting right here, okay. So I'm going to shut that mask off. And now we can come up here to compare. When I click on compare and hold it down, left click it with my mouse, there's my before and there's my after. And you notice it's only targeting the car. Oh, and you know what else? It's missed some areas. It's made some of these areas red inside the car. So let's put a couple negative control points in there. Or do I want to? Because Well, that makes it kind of blue. I don't know if it was picking up blue from, you know, I don't think it would have been picking it up from the paint, so I'm just going to click this. Let's say the interior was blue. We could leave it red if we want to, but let's change it back, just like so. And now let's do a compare. Here's a before and here's an after, but see how I just changed the car? And you'll also notice I have some red onto the uh, bumper here, which is chrome, which I would want that, right? Because I wouldn't want it to be blue. See how you can see the blue reflected on the bumper? Now we see red reflected on the bumper. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So now what if we wanted to change that hue to a different color? Now we can come here and we can drag and we could say, you know, I want it to be this color of blue or I want to make it green. Let's make our car green or more of an orangey color. But let's say we want to make it green. So we'd go green. And then we could come here and take its vibrancy and pull up its vibrancy, make it more vibrant. We could give it more saturation. We could give it less saturation. Okay, and it's only affecting the car itself. So I'll keep the saturation pretty much where it was. But then again, if we come up to compare, we can see here's the before and here's the after. So our green car has just turned blue, which is really nice. 
And if I need another area, if I miss an area, I can come up here and I'm just hovering over here and give that a click there. There's another area there. Right there. Okay. So there we go. So here's our before and here's our after. So that's U-Point technology. You know, it took me a little work. I had to really do a little bit of, um, you know, putting some control points down, but I was able to get it to look just the way I wanted it. And now I'm going to put another negative control point in here. Any area that you think you don't want to change on it, make sure you put a negative control point. And you're basically just, again, you're layer masking. So here's a before and here's the after. So it's only affecting the car. So pretty cool stuff. And then when you're done, just click close and voila, you're finished. And again, here's our before and here is our after. We change the car green. So yes, we can do layer masking and change hue inside of Photolab 4. It's a really powerful piece of software. By the way, if you come up here and click on uh, the local adjustments icon right here, you can see there's that control point. You can shut it off and turn it back on, okay? And you might say, I want a little bit of that blue to show through, so you can go ahead and pull this back, like the opacity back so it's all blue, or just adjust the opacity to blend the two colors together. But in my case, I want my car to go green. By the way, anytime you add a new local adjustment, they're gonna live in this area right in here. This is kind of like layers. DxO does not call these layers, but they're kind of like layers and you have opacities for each one of these different local adjustments, whether you're using control points or gradients or uh, brush masking, whatever you want. They're all going to live here and you have total control. Well, there you go. You can see the power of Photolab 4. Now, I used the U-Point technology to change the color of the car, but I could use the, uh, uh, the adjustment brushes. I could use the auto adjustment brush. So I could have done it that way, but I chose to use U-Point technology today. Here's my before. I had this blue car and I changed it green. It was simple to do. It takes a few clicks with the U-Point technology, but I find it's very simple and easy to do. And I love that technology. But you've got many different ways of doing it in uh, Photolab 4. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload another tutorial, you'll be notified about it.